myself. You got teeth in that floppy mouth. Yours are just gums. Ah. <laughs> you see, ladies, a hard go. Richard Widmark played me. This man has an impressive military resume, if only it were true. Tonight, the ABC 7 News I team investigates a new case of stolen valor. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cheryl Jennings. And I'm Larry Deal. Dan and Alma have the night off. Well, he's been able to convince veterans groups, even the Library of Congress, that he's the second most decorated soldier from World War II. He was honored at the USS Hornet over the weekend, but the ABC 7 News I team was on hand as well to reveal the truth. I team Zen Noise is here now with the story. Dan. Cheryl and Larry, there is a network of people across the country who work to expose the phonies. This story started with a tip to the POW network. It went to the Guardian of Valor and a retired Navy SEAL, Don Shipley. Then they contacted me, knowing I would check it out. For its living ship day, the USS Hornet Museum honored 89-year-old William Gaynor of Morgan Hill as a member of the underwater demolition team in World War II that predated the Navy SEALs. My UDT team, we destroyed 80% of the German submarine fleet in the Baltic Sea. Lost 19 out of 30 men. I cried. Gaynor told the audience his suicide missions earned him the Navy Cross, three silver stars, and four purple hearts. And then the worst one was in the North China Sea. I got stuck down below on the ship and it burned up. And I woke up four hours later on a hospital ship. He said he was the youngest lieutenant commander ever to serve in the Navy. I went through with the Navy there and ended up to be a lieutenant commander at 19. Hollywood heard about it and they made a movie about me. Richard Widmark played me. Gaynor claimed he was a consultant on the movie The Frogmen, that he became so famous even a renowned general sought him out. I met George Patton in Sicily. He heard about me and wanted to meet me, so I actually talked to George Patton. He impressed the crowd so much he signed autographs after. It's certainly an honor and a privilege to be in the presence of someone who uh, had such a distinguished career. And that's a lot of medals, and that's a lot of valor. The problem is, none of it is true. Based on a tip, the I-team started digging and obtained Gaynor's records under the Freedom of Information Act. He did serve in the Navy during World War II, but left as a seaman first class, not a lieutenant commander. He was never in the UDT. No Navy Cross, no Silver Stars, no Purple Hearts. Are you sure about those medals? Oh, yes. You're sure about the four Purple Hearts? Oh, yeah. When I gave Mr. Gaynor a copy of his actual records from the Navy, he showed me this certificate, supposedly from the Library of Congress, detailing his accomplishments, then admitted a school teacher friend had made it on a computer. Still, Gaynor persisted with his tall tales. Are you still going to tell these stories, sir? Well, that's what I did. That's what it's on here. Okay. I appreciate your time. Good luck. The news that they just sat through an hour of lies hit the veterans hard. You're emotional about it. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I'm not sad about him. Like the guys I knew didn't come back. The ones who didn't come back? Yeah. Beyond uncovering another case of stolen valor, it's important to look at the big picture. How do these lies get so far? How did it come to this? We were never suicide missions. We, were, we weren't expected to come back. The first documentation of Gaynor's lies comes from April 18, 2004, his interview for the Veterans History Project. The federal government has spent millions of dollars collecting oral histories and cataloging them at the Library of Congress. They include William Gaynor telling his phony stories. I got a boat through here and came out between two ribs here. That recording and its Library of Congress listing convinced a reporter for the Gilroy Dispatch and Morgan Hill Times to write this glowing feature in 2013 on Gaynor, the original Navy SEAL. I tracked him down in Morgan Hill after reading a newspaper article that written about him in Morgan Hill. This Air Force veteran was so impressed after meeting Gaynor, he brought him to the Hornet Museum's Director of Education. She didn't think to check Gaynor's records. I apologize, I'm just as shocked as anyone else, and that's not our policy here at all to, you know, promote any fraud at all. I mean, I, this is the first of my knowledge. With his appearance at the Hornet, Gaynor fooled yet another reporter who wrote this article that appeared on the Oakland Tribune, Contra Costa Times, and San Jose Mercury News websites this weekend. They have since removed it. 
It's important to have it correct. It is not important to fabricate it because all that does is taint the veterans that have given the greatest gift they have, which is their life. Gaynor's own son told me he heard the same war stories all his life. It's just a shock. He's trying to figure out what this means for the family. Larry, Cheryl. I'm in shock at watching that. I mean, it almost seems as though he's been telling the stories for so long that maybe he even believes them. You think that's possible? That could be part of it, but also they say that the grander the lie, the more outrageous it is, mm -hmm. the more likely people will be to actually believe it. Wow. So he's told some incredible lies it's, and people believed it. It's sad on so many levels. Yeah. It is. Dan, it is. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this to us. Appreciate it. Boy, you know, those brain cells are just flying out of here like you can't believe. Sucked into those black holes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Get a life. Get a job. Grow a spine, buddy. <laughs>